So we are about to explore or, or approach these HPC technologies, but not yet. So maybe next year in time is a very great opportunity for us to present the news or the update. So up to you. So the European Genome Archive. This is the structure of the talk. I will be covering from the what is DGA until infrastructure, and then I will lead. I will. I will let Alfred to explain the file demography and some works in progress. So first, first stuff first. What is the EGA? As you may have heard yesterday, the EGA was mentioned in two, in two talks. One from David, which was great, and it, it, it was used to set up a framework or the landscape as his challenge in reading one petabyte of data in, in one hour. Then we also the EGA was mentioned. Sorry. DJ was also mentioned in, in Mark Sitchers, is Mark here? Not yet. So he used to work at DGA and it was mentioned an, an, as an open, well open, as a, as a free way of securely archiving private data. So what is the DGA? The DGA is meant as a cartoon. This guy here is meant to be a researcher or, a, or the research community. So on one hand, actually on one arm, they are willing, they, they want to share as much as possible so that they can increase the sample size. By doing this, they can increase the statistical power and thus they can get stronger and more <coughs> stronger and more, more findings in their research. But on the other hand, um, they also notice, they know that this information they are sharing is really, really sensitive. So they are not that much willing to share this information because they may face afterwards some legal consequences. So the EGA is is dealing with the sharing dilemma. On top of this, we have that most of human genomic research funded by by European, well actually from agencies, realized that they were funding plenty of, of research that once done, once the papers were published, this data was kept Luckily, or, or forgotten, or, or lost in some cases. So they were trying to reuse as much as possible this data. And, and this is where the EGA can, comes. So the, the state's approach in dealing with this situation was called DIVIGAP, standing for Database of Genome and Phenome Archive, or Database of Genome and Phenomes. And the European approach is called the EGA, standing for European Genome and Phenome Archive. This is what we like to, to call the unified website. So as unified implies, before there used to be more than one website, which are these ones. This is the one from the CRG and this is the one from the EBI, which leads me to explain to you that the EGA was created at initially at EBI, here at the Welcome Trust Genome Campus, which is heaven in Earth. This is amazing. And then, early 2015, the CRG started joining uh, this EGA as a joint management effort, BRB. So this is the team. You may recognize some faces. This is the top management. Arkady, Jordi, Helen, Paul, Fisek, Dylan. And the rest of the team mainly devoted on help desk systems and both developers in front end and back end. So this is the EGA team. Later we will get into this one, which is the evolution of the EGA archive. And here you have some nice pictures on the amount of studies distributed or categorized by, by diseases or by technology being used for creating this data. And then, as a, as a summary, the EGA is a way to securely archive data and control it, distribute this data in a controlled way. So the data challenge. This is the latest paper we, we found on the prediction growth of genomics data. So this is real data up to this point, 15, a bit early, a bit more than 15. And here we have three projections. This is Moore's law, so we are at this point, and Moore's law says that in 18 months, so one year and a half from now, you will end up having twice as much data as you now have. Then you face Illumina's projection. Illumina, for those of you who don't know, Illumina is the main responsible or the main guilty of having such explosion of data because they are the ones building these machines that are machines 
creating that they, they create data as, as as smart. And then we also have this other projection, which is a bit more scary, but not not applying in our case. So by following this projection, which is the one that EGA is following, this is real data, and this is a linear projection based on the growth, a linear growth in, based on previous year data. And then you face that if you project this Illumina estimation, by the end of 17, we are hitting 12 petabytes of data, which is scary. It's, it's, it's a good opportunity, but really scares, scares a lot. And, and then on top, in, in 18, we are hitting 24 petabytes. This is estimation, sorry. Then you, you find out papers like, like these ones that certainly don't help at all, a lot at all, which are genetic data will take up more space than you do in 10 years. So other one is big data, astronomical or genomical. So ge genome, genomical data is overtaking astronomical, the, the, the main one, always consider the, like the top one in, in amounts of data. And also this one, genome researchers raise a lot over big data. Okay, so this is a more great picture of our archive. EG archive is right now 2.6 petabytes of data, slightly more than two and a half. David may not like this number at all, so he may update his challenge in reading the whole EGA in just one hour by putting much more nodes and much more bandwidth and much more disks. And this, this amount of data is distributed in three quarter million files. Among them, we are we are storing, we are providing flagships such as ICCC, UKDK, the Standard Welcome Trust, and some others. So, just a very quick overview on how this data comes in and how this data is distributed. So, the data as a submitter, submitters want to publish their research, their paper researches. So, they, on top of providing the paper, they have to provide some EGA accessions. And for them to get this, they have to submit this data to the EGA. This is the way that the agencies, this is the way that the agencies develop for being sure that this data is discoverable and requestable. So the process of submission, very long, long story, very short, is just two steps, which is first one, encrypting and, and uploading this data into EGA premises, and then they have to upload. The, the metadata into this, the metadata regarding the files and the, and, the, and the logical objects. So this triggers the archiving or ingestion process, then they release this, this study to public, which means that all this metadata is accessible through the web, then this means that this data is discoverable and searchable for plenty of people who request access, not to us, but to the, to the real original submitters of the data, but this is not true, they, they request access to the DAC, which is Data Access Committee, that the original submitters of the data created as the granting agency. So they, they request access, and if they are granted, they well, they can download this data from using the Security GA download plugin, or we provide an aspect of our FTP box so that they can download this encrypted data. So very briefly, we are in, in 2015, we got more than 2K new requesters, which gives us more than 7,000 requesters as an overall. The, those are distributed very internationally abroad, so the States, UK, Canada, Germany, Japan, Australia, plenty of, of countries. And this is the distribution of the papers that were well quoting the data hold, hold at the GA. So you may not be familiar with these name names, but those are really, really high impact factor journals. Then this is the, the funding agencies, so the ones that pay the party. This is both Catalan and Spanish government, La Caixa, Sperachoa, CRG, Spanish National Institute of Bioinformatics, both UPF and BSC, and Elixir and Bolivia. So just to conclude, the infrastructure which is holding the EGA. David was right, so BSC is holding the EGA. This picture is not right. I mean, the, the, the EGA, this is my nostrum, and the EGA is not in, inside here. So this is a diagram 
EJ is actually run, being run in these two servers. Those are in the upper part of the diagonal, the campus node. This is the storage, as David was mentioned before. This storage is really close here. I don't know what, which direction. But this is at Senac data center, so really, really, really close. And just for you to make an idea of, of the storage, what is, what is the storage about? They have, this may be a bit outdated, so they, this may have grown. They have 20 GPFS servers, and each of these two petabytes block, as a, as a single block here, is, is built of 12 of these ones. And this one is crowded. Yeah. This one is crowded with 63 terabytes each drive. So they have here, you, you can imagine the amount of electricity, space, air conditioning, cooling, and what rack, plenty plen of, of stuff here. Also notice that, as David mentioned before, data DataSound was providing a half petabyte into high use. So this is for use. And we, they have 12 of these just in this block. So 12, 12, and some other dozen. And that's it. Uh, Fred will now take the floor and explain some demography. Thank you, Arthur. OK, well, uh, what I'd like to explain uh, today is uh, very briefly. It's uh, one of the tasks been involved in since I recently joined the, the CRG. And it's uh, about the uh, file demography of, on, the, on the archive. Um, well, this is the, the picture that we had uh, initially. I mean, we have a, an archive, uh, but we have no uh, deeper information about the, the structure of this, of this archive. And what we want to, to get is uh, this picture. I mean, we have uh, this kind of, uh, of file um, with such amount of files uh, uh, occupying such amount of, of disk. So how we can do it? Uh, first, we can uh, rely on the, on the extension of the, of the file name. I mean, this is a, a GPG file, so it's a, an, a, an encrypted file. Uh, but in the... In the well, the, there is no uh, strict policies about uh, the, the control of the files uh, being ingested in the, in the archive. So we cannot uh, uh, rely or trust in the, in the, in the extensions that, that the users are, are, are doing to the, to the files. So we started a, a, a project named Biopsy. And what uh, we wanted to do is, um, as, as an, a real biopsy with, with uh, a file. So, uh, and with this file, what we have done is to get a, a small slice of the file and uh, have a look at the, at the magic number inside the, the, the first bytes of the, of the file to get the, the, the actual uh, um, uh, format of the, of the file. Uh, okay. Uh, by doing this, uh, you can uh, we can uh, find two, two different types of, of files. What we call it recursive types, in, as can be seen, uh, for example, encrypted files, compressible or packet that uh, uh, needs to uh, to do another action to the to this file. So, for example, if you have an encrypted file, you have to decrypt the file. Uh, you get a new a new file decrypted, so you get a smaller slice of this file and try to, to get what is the, the, the format of the file. You then find it's a compressed file, you have to, to decompress and, and so on and, and so forth. Until you arrive uh, to a type of file that we have called uh, stop types, where you can get a binary file or a text file or whatever it is. Uh, kind of file when you can get the, the actual biological inf information. So let me uh, let me use here a, 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 a statement that was uh, said uh, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. 
So, uh, your eyes can deceive you, don't trust them. Uh, we can say here that your users uh, will eventually deceive you, well, whatever you, you do. Uh, at the end, uh, even if, if they don't intend to, to do it, uh, we cannot rely on in the, in the, in uh, in the information that the users have here. Because we have uh, found that there are uh, several, several files that in the extension file you get it was a compressive file and eventually it was not a compressive file, for example. So, let me explain you here some, some issues that, uh, that we found during the, uh, the execution of the SBOPC uh, experiment. Um, the, the, the files on the archive were um, actually placed in, a, in an object store from, from CleverSafe. So the access to these files uh, was done via a, a file system uh, in, the, in the user space interface to, to access to the, to the file. And this uh, initial version of the, of the file system interface does not read uh, is not able to read uh, small parts of files. Uh, and I mean, and then it's in, in the sense that if you access one, one file, what you have done, uh, what, what you are doing, is to download the entire object to an um, to um, a cache in, in, the, in the node that you are working on. So imagine the, the picture. What we are, uh, we are doing is to, to get a, a accessing a file uh, during one, two seconds uh, to get the, the initial bytes of, of the file, and stop the access to that file, and then go to the next file, read one, two seconds, stop, read one, two seconds, stop for different, for different files, very, very, very fast. But uh, by doing this, are you hearing? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry. But uh, what you are doing is uh, uh, doing this uh, this process or reading, uh, stop, stop reading, reading, really stop reading. But in the background, you are downloading uh, all the entire objects, and, and, and there are objects that maybe uh, occupy a, a lot of gigabytes. So uh, imagine the picture again. To do it uh, about eight hundred thousand times. Do it in uh, very fast and in, in parallel uh, executions. And what you uh, get, what can you imagine the result of this of this execution? What the result was uh, divided into phases. The, the first phases are collapsing the in the network in the, in the computing center uh, because the, uh, they are not giving only services. Uh, this clever say uh, object storage. They are not giving only services for the uh, for the uh, security <coughs> center, but also for the entire uh, um, uh, center of the API. So the first phase was uh, that collapse in the network, and the second phase was that your planet. Suddenly, I, I couldn't uh, uh, um, send uh, jobs anymore to the to the cluster. You'll uh, suddenly see your uh, name in a configuration file saying, sorry, you cannot uh, send any, any job. Okay, well, let's try to fix that. Uh, but uh, working face-to-face uh, -face with the developer of the, of the file system implementation, what we uh, try to, to do is uh, to open, when in fact was a, a, a a workaround, not a, a, a complete fix, but uh, we created a script that uh, maps the file path uh, of, the, of the file to uh, to the object uh, ID in the, the metadata server of the file server, and do a, a request uh, directly to the object storage and, and, and getting only the, the, the initial bytes of the of the file. Well, by by doing this and um, I'm promising, uh, well, I will behave, I will not, <laughs> I will not do it again uh, with, some, with some support of some friends. My public image was eventually cleaned up and I uh, could uh, start uh, uh, to submit jobs again. 
and then we'll see a project um, uh, could be finished. This is some um, pictures of the of what we obtained, and I don't know if it's very very interesting for you, but uh, he allows us to 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 get uh, or to have some decisions about the about the um, the. The type project. Uh, for example, here uh, we can see this is a, a kind of file uh, called the bound, and this is a kind of file called crank. And you can see that the number of files uh, is more or less the, the same in the, the archive, but uh, the occupation in the, the archive of the bound files is much larger than, than the, than the crank files. Even we already know that uh, this kind of files. Oh, sorry. This kind of file is a compressed uh, um, file, and this is not. We, we can. Uh, we, we allow us to, to take some some decision. Well, we, we will try to, to to store this kind of files in, in a compressed uh, type. And maybe we can switch to this uh, type of files. Um, one time. And just uh, well, some working progress is uh, the, the final uh, slide. Uh, some other tasks uh, we are uh, developing in the, in the CRG is uh, we, are, we are participating in the, in the European uh, project. It's called uh, Accelerate. It's included in the, in the Elixir uh, project. And it's very, uh, about uh, data transfer. Uh, well, it's a uh, it's a big uh, uh, issue also to to deal with such amount of uh, of data to to transfer the the, the institutes that are involved, uh, and this is being done uh, by integrating, for example, grid FTP with uh, an authentication authentication infrastructure that has been all, already developed by the Elixir community, and. The, the Beacon is uh, uh, a project in which uh, a, a user, for example, can uh, see an, uh, as a small, what to say it uh, quickly, a small uh, glimpse of the of the information in, in an archive, but without having to uh, demand access to the to the DAC, to the Data Access Committee, to download all, all the files um, in the. In the, in the study that he is being developing, so uh, he can simply can, for example, uh, know if uh, if the file uh, that he is uh, searching uh, contains some some base in base it in, in or place it in the in some place in the in the ground zone uh, before to download the, the complete file. Um, and the the Ega local is uh, a project about. Uh, some institutions uh, uh, having the possibility to to get a, a local installation of, of the of the EGA. Uh, for example, if they have uh, problems to to get this information go out of the of the of the of the institution, and all the problems that are generated uh, by the federation of these different uh, local EGAs. Uh, well, that's some uh, very information you you want to to read about the, the project. Uh, you can drop us a mail or chat with us uh, in a minute. Thank you.